Hello everyone, Rich LaRousse here. A break from the usual today, a different video. This is Ship Sinking Simulator, or Ship Sinking Sandbox, or whatever it's called this week. Uh, it's basically me showing off my ship that I made a few months ago. I've already done a video with this ship already. Um, I think it was number 6 or 7, I can't remember what it was. Uh, basically it's my own custom made design. It's a bit bigger than what you expect from normal uh, ships on this program. It is 246 pixels long and 69 pixels high, so it's about two thirds large, or about a third larger from than the average ship you get in this program. Uh, the reason, and also the reason I use version one, is because it, the, the ships break apart too easily in version two and three, whereas on this version the ships have a bit more give, although a bit more, a bit too much flex. The ships tend to bend a bit more, and as you can see with this one, the ship is bending in the middle. I don't know if you can see my cursor, I don't think you can, but in the middle, underneath the second and third funnel, the ship is dipping slightly. But that doesn't matter, because ships at this time had a dip in the middle anyway. There, there was the shear, the ships were designed, the bow and stern to be higher than the midships, it's just uh, the way they've done it. It's, uh, I think it's to do with, if you get water on the deck, the water would sink to the lowest point on the deck, and it would be remain, well, it would remain buoyant, I think, I think that's the process of it all anyway. Um, and the, also the, another thing with my design, the ship has, well the funnels are a bit too tall, I think. If I zoom in a bit, the funnels are about another th a quarter too big, or too high. But it doesn't matter, they're not, they're not really there for any gain anyway, they're designed as a, yeah, they're designed to break off, they're, they're held on by a single pixel, as you can see underneath, single pixel holding them off, so once the ship gets to a certain angle, the funnels will just fall off anyway, uh, taking the rigging with them as well. The masts, I have cut down to about a third of their uh, original height because they wave around like they're in a bad wind, you know, they're just they're not, they're useless basically. Um, and also the uh, part of the promenade deck is hollowed out, that is no reason for that, it's just that, uh, I don't know, why did I do that? Well it doesn't matter, it's basically the boat deck and super, the superstructure in that area doesn't really, isn't really a load bearing structure, it's, it doesn't, um, deter from the strength of the ship anyway. Um, what else was I going to say? Uh, well anyway, the purpose of this video is just to prove a point which, uh, to do with flooding. The ship that I have designed is uh, built in two phases basically. The, the watertight doors down below which go up to about halfway up the hull, uh, all the way up the uh, draft, up halfway up the hull. Basically they are designed to keep water out if you have two, maybe three compartments flooded, they're designed not to let water over the top. Um, but I'll say a lot of people, when they build ships in this program, they don't bother with anything above the compartments. So if you have just compartments, doesn't matter where you drill the hole in the side of the ship, the ship is going to sink no matter what you do. It's just going to absorb water like a sponge. If you have compartments as well as the decks above, in their individual compartments, the ship will float for a damn sight longer. It will still sink but it would take a lot longer and also the ship won't break apart as easily see a lot of people just cut a hole, they dr you know, keep drilling a hole all the way along the deck or all the way along the side of the ship and it just goes down like a bloody torpedo um, the purpose of this video is I'm just going to make a small incision in the side of the ship and let nature do its course or take its course and uh, I've already got uh, the, the pre-set uh, uh, what is it, the settings of this thing, it is on strength 6 because anything stronger that's a bit too much uh, the water buoyancy is 7 I think I've turned the stress off because just glow, the thing just glows in the dark and also the waves are set at 0 so there's no waves at all, it's, it's still as a mill pond uh, so yeah, the, the purpose of this is just to prove a point how the designers originally built the ship, you know, you had two compartments flooded and the ship will remain fine, all the, all the first three compartments I think it was. So if I make an incision in that, that area there, the water will pour in, as you can see there, but it shouldn't affect the ship, it, shouldn't, it should, it should uh, float quite fine. Usually when you get people drill a hole inside the ship, the water floods up and goes all over the fucking place, so the ship just pulls down and floods all over the place. But uh, I've got the water pressure set on three I think. So it's going to take a while, but uh, there we go. Go to the stern. The ship will flex a bit. The ship will bend, like it is in the middle. But it's designed to do that. 
well, I don't think it is actually, but it will bend. It will probably break apart as well. I have no control Oh, however the ship will break apart. The funnels will fall off on their own probably. The masts, well, the masts are actually quite sturdy at their original, at their height at the moment, so they'll probably stay. But the way the ship breaks apart, if it does, I have no control over that. I'm not doing it myself. I'm just leaving it to do its own thing. We've got the ship flooding now. And the idea is the water will reach to the top. Well, hopefully, well, the water shouldn't go above the water level anyway. The water should stop at the water line. As you can see in the in the bigger compartment, the water is slowing down. Actually, it's speeding up again. But the water, if this thing is right, the water slows down just as it gets to the top of the compartment. It is overflowing the top. That's the water pressure doing that. It shouldn't do that really. But it is gradually flooding over into that compartment there, and also now it's starting to flood forward. So if I flood the first, why well, is it six compartments? That's two. And what? I cut them about halfway up. And just let the water in. The ship will flood up. Like I, like I said at the beginning, the ship is built in two sa uh, two phases. The, the, the water tower compartments below the decks are separate from the decks above. Do you see? about midway through the superstructure there are holes already pre-cut in the upper superstructure these are basically represent portholes and openings in the side of the ship like uh, cargo doors and things like that the uh, ships meant to flood that way it basically allows the ship to settle as it is at the moment it's going down gradually and then the water will begin to flood like in the, the well deck the well deck's now flooded and the water will gradually start to pour in into the well deck or into the cargo hold really the, and now the forecastle's under that's actually the ship's going down quicker than I expected anyway the ship's going down now all the, all the first six compartments are now flooded the seventh compartment is filling up the ship is now beginning to flood gradually inside the ship taking its time the stern is still relatively level because of the flex of this the ships in this program there's, there's too much flex in reality that it wouldn't do that the ship would remain although it probably would bend but not as as much as that really anyway, I'm not no expert on that got a bit of buoyancy well the buoyancy is almost gone in the bell the buoyancy in the stern is still there let's check out the stern everything seems fine still uh, still going down the bridge is now starting to go under the mast is now completely flooded the bow cargo holes are still remaining relatively alright we're now getting flooded into compartment number eight so that's three four five six seven yep compartment number eight is now beginning to flood the midship is beginning to bend slightly and everything is going down and the first funnel is now tilting I don't know what's going on there uh, oh, <laughs> it's collapsed completely now. The first funnel is now. Oh no, no, hang on, it's holding together. It's holding together. The first funnel is. Yeah, let's cut the wire. Let it go. Anyway, the bow's going down now. The ship is bent like a banana, and it's going to break any second now. The second funnel is now. Oh, the second funnel's collapsed. The third funnel's collapsing. The ship is now breaking apart. I have no control over that, it's not me doing that, the ship's doing it itself. So now the bell's the bell's now heading down. It'll sink gradually. The first funnel's already fallen, the second funnel's was in the process of collapsing, but it hasn't yet. The third funnel is now completely inverted. And the double bottom is holding it together. Oh no, it's failed. The ship is now completely completely pulled apart now. So the bell's now going down broke between the second and third funnel the bow now heads down and that is the last we'll see of that now the stern is now beginning to bobble like a cork or bob like a cork it is sort of going up and down the third funnel is in the way sort of acting as a counterweight at the moment so now I'm thinking I should just cut that off but I'll leave it for now the, uh, the the deck house underneath the third funnel is flooding. The mast is uh, not the master funnel is, like I said, upside down. The the section between the under, well, underneath the third funnel is completely crumpled. You can see it's been pulled and twisted and 
bent slightly and just collapsed as well. Bit of a mess there. I would cut that funnel out of the way just so actually I will cut it. Let the funnel fall. I'll just cut the funnel so let it fall on its own. Cut that bit there. So now the funnel should just detach from that piece. And yeah, it's now going on its own. The bow is nearly at the bottom now. Now the stern's flooding on its own. Stern's now making its own way to the bottom. Although it will sink a lot a lot slower because there's a less weight behind it, although it is flooding in these smaller uh, cut holes already. It's actually taking actually sinking quicker than I expected. If you're annoyed by my talking, you can just mute the video. I do apologise if I ramble on. But yeah, that's uh, that's just me. Yeah, the uh, grand, the second staircase now. The, the deck house is flooded. Area below that's flooded. Stern is now reaching for the sky. The, pro uh, the propellers, if they were there, are now out of the water. Shame we can't add propellers. It's a shame, really. Uh, add something which would look a propeller, otherwise it would just add to weight. Anyway, the ma the mast is uh, a bit wibbly. He's sort of uh, flexing one way or the other. Funnel number four is is uh, the, the cables holding the funnel up are now pulled tight. The uh, the tension there holding the funnel up. Now the stern's heading for the bottom. Well, I would say heading for the bottom, actually reaching for the stars at the moment. Where's the bow? How much have you got at the bottom? Yeah, the bow's now hit the bottom. Ooh, it's crumbled, and the funnel's collapsed. I know I said at the beginning the mast is useless, but the mast has actually stayed up. The bow, the full peak of the bow, it's crumpled. Back end of the stir, uh, the back end of the bow has collapsed slightly. The rigging is still attached. Expansion joint hasn't opened at all either. So yeah, the bows survived all right. Well, the, the mast a bit crumbled. Yeah, the, the bows survived the dive quite well. Now let's go back to the stern. And the stern, oh, the stern's right vertical now. Stern is completely up the wrong way. Oh shit, I just clicked on the. Oh bollocks, I just clicked on the compartment. Oh, the stern's going over. Stern is now going upside down, that's not how it's supposed to be. Well, we don't really know, to be honest. No, none of us was there. None of us were there. Nobody knows for sure what happened. But the stern is going, going, going. It was going, it's. It's levelling out again. Yeah, still a lot of air trapped in there, no wonder she imploded. The, f the funnel's still attached as well. The mast is still upright. You see all the cables are now pulled tight. They are under full tension. If I was to cut one of these ma uh, cables, the funnel will probably collapse. Actually, if I do that, I just bing that one there and see if the funnel collapses or falls off. It is falling forward. Yeah, so is the stern. The stern is now completely under. Yep, the uh, funnel's not going to break off now because now the stern's travelling faster than it. So yeah, the ship is now completely under. And if there was full water pressure on, or if there was a proper water pressure simulator, the stern would probably implode around about now, I think. The, the poop deck would probably be lift off and peeled back. Compartments would probably explode, or implode. And a lot of bits would just break off. Same with the bow, really. I just clicked on something I shouldn't. Bow survived quite well. There was, no, there was no air when it went under. Well, well no air when it uh, left the uh, left the left the stern. And flooded completely. So basically, all the damage you see now is just impact damage with the sea floor. There's a bit of collapse at the back there, but uh, nothing too drastic. But that's, the stern is now going down. So it's going down slowly. Still got to flood, but anyway, I shall do a quick jump cut while I reload the thing. Well, here we are back again at the surface, the ship now fully restored to its original state. Um, I, well, I'm not going to do another sinking because it, uh, the last one took about a quarter of an hour. Uh, but anyway, 
I'll just give you a few details about the ship I designed. The uh, the ship, like I said at the start, the ship is uh, 246 pixels long and 69 pixels high. That's from the keel to the top of the funnels. Although the funnels, like I said at the beginning, are also a bit too tall. But uh, that's basically just a weight thing. Um, yeah, the uh, the funnels, are, like I said, are also held on by a single pixel. That's, that's all the strengths they have. They're basically just dummy dead weights. Certain angle, the, the uh, funnels will just break off. Um, also, the gap between the the uh, top of the bulk, the top of the bulkheads to the bottom of the decks, the uh, that is just a single pixel originally, although it can't really tell. And this one is a slight different brown on the deck to the white there. So it is a, it is a single pixel, but it's not faded very well. Uh, the cables are a single pixel as well, although it doesn't really show when you zoom right out. The masts are also uh, the masts are two pixels. The keel is three pixels thick, I think, compared to the uh, rest of the ship, which is two. Basically, give it a bit more thickness and a bit more strength. As you saw when the ship broke apart, the keel tried to hold together but broke apart too soon because another section of the midship collapsed. The rudder also is just a dead weight. There's no no water allowed in, or no water can get in there. It's just a dead weight of uh, one texture. Got a docking bridge on the stern, which serves no purpose either. It doesn't flood. It doesn't add support to any weight. Well, it probably adds a bit of weight, but no uh, support in any strength. Uh, got all the deck houses on the top. The expansion joint I added on the top of the superstructure. I'm not sure where it was meant to be. I'm I'm pretty sure it was just after, the, or just behind the third funnel. Um, but I've built it under the third funnel, I think that's meant to be wrong. There's also an another expansion joint just forward of the third funnel. That was meant to be covered up by a uh, piece of the deck, but I forgot to put that in. The forward expansion joint, as you can see, is just forward of the grand staircase be between the first two funnels. Um, the bridge overhangs the front of the promenade deck, as it does in real life. Um, so yeah, that's it. The car forward cargo holds are actually two, but in real life there's one. I added two uh, just to allow a bit more water in. The uh, cargo holds on the uh, well deck are in the right place, although they don't go down to the belly of the ship as they should. Let's too much water in, you see. Uh, got a four peak, that's all fine. We don't have propellers. We don't have a hole for the propellers. That's already been explained. Um, yeah, all the compartments are not they're not levelled out. You know, as they were on the real ship, they are sort of scattered about. But uh, they do add full strength to the ship and flooding. Uh, it's not just say flood defences, is it? It sort of just channels the water in another direction, stops it from flooding all over the place. The deck houses on the top are not uh, flood defended at all. They just flood as soon as the water hits them. They they soak water up like a sponge, um, and also collapse as well slightly with the funnels on top. Or if the funnels already gone, then that's no problem. But uh, yeah, originally when I designed this thing, it had the, the funnels had two cables on each side holding them up, but uh, I reduced it to just one. So that's that. Um, if you're interested, I could put this ship up for download. If you're going to use it in the later versions of the ship sim sinking program, you're just going to want to change the colour slightly, open it in paint or whatever, and change the palette round because uh, I opened this up in uh, p uh, version three of the program and it just fell apart because it's the wrong colours. Uh, I think grey is, I don't know what it is actually, is it grey? Is the main body of the ship? I'm not sure, but anyway. There is a palette you can look at and uh, it will tell you what the materials are. Basically what I've done on mine. The the, uh, the PNG file I have is that pink is the white stuff, black is the brown stuff, and red is the black stuff. It's very confusing, but that's how it's done. Uh, so that's that. That's basically me rabbiting on for the next, or for the past half an hour, or 20 minutes. Uh... Probably won't do another uh, ship sinking sim for a little while, or if I can be bothered, I'll just get back onto my uh, Minecraft tutorials if I'm allowed to. Um, anyway, this is Rich LaRousse signing off, logging off, and disappearing, and I shall return with something else later on. So, uh, bye for now.